You're listening to Building the Broncos with Nick Kendall and Carl Dummler, Broncos country's leading draft and scouting analysts. Get on over to milehighhuddle.com to sound off on all things Broncos. Rolling. So we got Dylan Von Arks in the house. How we doing? What, what? Slim slow, rocking the old D there. Two minute warning. Getting the thumbs up and thumbs up from John behind the scenes there. Uh hello from John, everybody. And Carl Floor is yours. All right. Well, everyone, welcome into Building the Broncos. I am your host, Carl Dumbler, and of course, joining me is Mr. Nick Kendall. Nick, how you doing, buddy? Hey, doing pretty well. Uh wasn't sure if I was going to make it on time. There was a pretty bad accident on the interstate up to from where I'm working to here. So I was stuck in traffic for about 20, 25 minutes. But uh, here we are, ready for a fun Tuesday night of talking football and uh, all the rumors, man. It's rumor season. Even though there's no combine, <laughs> still got some juicy rumors and stuff to go through. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. It, it really, man, it is hard not to, like, the the combine should be going on this whole last yeah. week. And I was really hoping when they were talking about the whole, you know, like we'll do half the group for one week, half the group the next week. I was like, oh, yes, they're probably going to do it. And then they were just like, nah, we're good. Yeah. And uh, and of all years not to do it, it's like this is the year you need that extra information. So I it just it's it's a very sad ordeal for sure. Well, Carl, everybody's running four twos at the Exos facilities, right? I think I think. <laughs> They had Chad and Eric running four twos last week. Not, oh, not that man. those guys can't move it, but uh, that's you know everything with a grain of salt. I think we saw our boy Caleb Fairley, Caleb, Caleb Farley, excuse me, ran a reported four two four. Yes, sir. Um, so I mean that's but, awesome, but uh, man, enough I, I, enough salt there to kill multiple slugs, right? Like ugh. yeah, but I, I would still say he's one of those guys I expected to run like a four three. Yeah, no, yeah, but a four two four is like. That's fast. That's faster than like some Olympians. Yes, you know, I, like that, yes, I agree. Just, I, just, I agree, I, but if they get hard, man, you you know me. That's how it yeah, is. <laughs> right, and and it, it's uh, hard because it, it does take away from when you mix in those kind of numbers. Hey, William. It makes everyone. Hey, William, uh, welcome from Kansas Not on this side here too. Yeah. Uh, yes, we like our beards here in Kansas. That is for sure. But uh, no, it, it's. It is hard because it takes away from really being able to see what these guys bring athletically and being able to say, look at Caleb Farley running a four three forty and just being like, Man, this guy, he flies. And yeah. so yeah, it, it is. But hey, we'll move forward, we'll figure it out and and we, we still know the kid is fast. We still know a lot of other guys are fast. There's some of them that are like, Yeah, you're not fast for sure. <laughs> and uh I don't know. We'll we'll see how that all plays out when it comes to the NFL draft and how much teams are willing to, to uh, believe some of these numbers. Oh yeah. Bo Jackson fast. There you go. I think he said he ran like a four one forty. I mean, gosh, he, he was a freak of nature, you know, not yeah. be Bo Jackson. Yeah, that's for sure. Play, he wouldn't play running back in today's NFL. Probably. You think edge rusher tight end wide receiver. I mean, he probably wouldn't play running back, right? Yeah. I, I'd probably put him at that wide receiver spot and just let him run down the field. Tell people good luck keeping up with this guy. It's like Derrick Henry and Von Miller have the exact same like athletic testing and measurements. Now, granted, I think Von is a little bit more flexible, which matters for that edge rusher position. But yeah. uh, I mean, those guys running back, it's obviously devalued right now. But I'm curious if it will evolve to a position where you just don't have enough difference makers at athlete, right? Because those guys running backs aren't getting paid. So why go play yeah. running back when you can play wide receiver, linebacker, or edge rusher? So it's, yeah, it will be interesting. Which is find a man. Yeah, it's weird. I when I was a, a kid, I remember running back was the position everyone wanted to play. Now it's quarterback or wide receiver or yeah. edge rusher. So some of those wide receivers need to move to cornerback, baby. We just do. There's so many good wide receivers. Some of those kids, if you're dropping balls in practice, please go play cornerback. You're gonna make more <laughs> yeah. money. You really are. Yeah, so, it, yeah it's amazing what they're getting. <laughs> Yes, yes, we do. All right, everyone. Well, before we get to our show here today, we must say hello to our presenting sponsor, Manscaped. Listen up, mm. fellas. Of course, 2020 really sucked, but it, it's 2021 now, which means it's time to embrace the new year, new me mindset. And the best way to start cultivating that is with Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels and helping 2 million men around the world keep their male grooming on point. 
If you let yourself go in 2020 while in quarantine, Manscaped is here for you to reboot and stay clean and shaved in 2021. Yeah, guys, I know we have a lot of dudes out here listening to the show that spring is right around the corner. Summertime is right around the corner. And especially those of you in the Rocky Mountains, you know, you got a lot of outdoor activities going on, maybe some backcountry fishing or hiking or backpacking. I got a couple of backpacking trips uh, in the work right now, but you bet I'm going to bring one of my favorite products from Manscaped, the Crop Mop, these individual white or individual wrapped ball wipes. Yes, you heard that right. They have active pH control. And, you know, Carl, my, I myself, I, I can get a little bit... Uh, Unfresh, and these really help me freshen up, which is really important when you are in the back country. So uh, that's one of my favorite products. Also, they have the refined cologne. That's been my cologne of choice here recently. Um, typically, my wife has bought me some cologne, but this one's entered the rotation and has the wife's, uh, you know, two thumbs up. So that's really great. And uh, it, I mean, great, great, great products over at Manscaped. It's not just the lawnmower 3.0. Right. And also, great thing that's going on right now. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code HUDDLE at manscaped.com. Your family jewels will thank you. Yeah, guys, that's right. Make sure you head on over to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code HUDDLE. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com if you use the code HUDDLE. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and hopefully at the end of your guys' rainbow, instead of a pot of gold, will be a new Lawnmower 3.0. All right. Also, we want to let you guys know, make sure to be following us on Twitter. You can find me at Carl Dumbler MHH and Nick at Nick Kindle MHH and John. Make sure uh, the behind the scenes man of the hour at John K MHH. Uh, <laughs> and uh, make sure that you're also heading over to Mile High Huddle. We are getting ready. March is March and April, man. This is this is our time of the year. This is what yes. we love. And Absolutely. so you got free agency. You're going to have contracts that are getting ready to come up. We, we we get to find out real soon what the Broncos are going to do with Justin Simmons, either that long-term contract or get him tagged or, or let him, let him walk. I, I hate saying that, but, but we're, you tune into milehighhuddle.com because that's exactly where you're going to get to all of this information. And uh, yeah, it, it's just going to be an exciting time. Tune in and it, just, just make sure that you guys are, are keeping up on everything that is happening with the Denver Broncos and, uh, Make sure that you're heading over to sportsnation.com as well and checking out everything that's going to be happening with football. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. So, all right, Nick, we got uh, we got a big subject here today. Yeah, we absolutely do. But first, let's get to the comment section. Just say hello to some people that are in the house that we really do appreciate. Um, we got Chad. Oh, my gosh. Marcellius coming in here. God, sorry if I butchered your name. Yeah, I tried there. Nice. I did my best. I took French back in the day. I'm assuming that's French. We got Ernie Mays coming in the house. Uh, go Broncos, go Vaughn, go pod. Yes to all three. I'm here for that. Um, we got Jay Roper in the house. Jay sent us a really, really nice message here uh, the other day. We really do appreciate that Jay and uh, hashtag hair gang there. Hashtag curly hair gang. Let's keep it going. Um, <laughs> I saw we had uh, Jamal Killings here in the house as well. Hello, MHH family. Jamal, Jamal, it's always good to see you. We really do appreciate that. You got a great smile there. Um, Greg Smith also in the house. Good to see you. Good evening to you as well. Um, appreciate you. I haven't seen Slim Slow in here before, but uh, this killed me. I, I'm, I flashed it already, but I wish there was a way to get 20% off and free shipping. Well done, Jim. You you made me laugh. That was <laughs> caught me off guard. Anthony Cordova in the house. Good evening, dudes. Go Broncos. One of our favorites here, DNV3. You guys think Patrick go, Payton goes after Rudolph? Uh, real quick, um, I think the question would be, I think it's possible, Nick Vinette. Right. If the Broncos move on from Nick Vanette and you have a little bit of money to play, maybe you go after a guy like Rudolph. I don't think it's in as like neat as the Broncos. But if you're looking for a Y tight end, that classic inline guy that can be a blocker, I think Rudolph makes a lot of sense. But I do think yeah. that there's going to be a market for him as well. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing is he's going to price himself out of Denver. They're not going to be as desperate as some other teams for tight end. So it, it, I, I just think they're going to miss out. Um. <laughs> Willie, you're hurt. You know what? You hurt my feelings, Willie. Uh, you left me hanging on Saturday when you said you wanted to hear Luke debate Zach about Drew Locke instead of me. So turnabout's fair play, buddy. I, I remembered. Don't think I don't see you. I t- Lock and key, baby. <laughs> um, but All anyway, right. we should yeah. probably get to the uh, the main thing here, obviously. My dog's favorite pod as well. Thank you very much, uh, Michael <laughs> Disp- Dispasquello. Uh, appreciate you very much. Um, the first thing, Mike Kliss had a... About a three-minute interview uh, yesterday that was dropped with Channel 9 News, I believe, down in Denver. I've, I'm not a Denver local, so I could not tell you. I think believes Channel 9, though. Um, and he had 
for being like a two and a half minute, three minute interview, he had so much information in there that uh, is worth discussing. We can spend this whole entire show. I got three articles out of all that information. Uh, Gary Leeds Palmer. Hello. How you doing? Thank you to see it. Uh, we got Lucas also in the house. Lucas Estrella. We made it. Yes, you did, baby. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, you're right. I'm definitely more of the middle ground when it comes to Drew Locke. I try to be um, where Luke is embracing the, the hatred. Uh, so <laughs> that would be interesting. But anyway, Mike Kliss. One of the most plugged in guys. Now, I do think there is some some question, at least as to how plugged in he is now with George Payton. Uh, obviously, Kliss was the guy at the table with John Elway. If there was somebody that was, you know, sharing a glass of scotch late at night, uh, odds are that was John Elway and Mike Kliss. If it wasn't, you know, Joe Ellis, but still, Mike Kliss probably one of the most plugged in Broncos insiders. And when he says something, you know, you want to take note, you want to pay attention because it's probably coming from the very top, if not, you know, close to it. So yeah. first bit of information from Mike Kliss, uh, three things I want to touch on here. The first one, and I will read it right now. Um, So it was a JJ, JJ Watts contract uh, predicament for the Denver Broncos and how that would impact Von Miller. Obviously JJ Watts signed a two year deal with the Arizona Cardinals getting 10.5 APY average per year, a million dollars. And Cliss says that that contract actually might is it's fifteen point five. Fifteen point five. There you go. Yeah, thirty one million total. Fifteen point five. Fifteen point five. Excuse me. Um, doing it live, folks. Uh, so fifteen point five million two years for JJ Watt, and that might impact the market for the Broncos' ability to renegotiate slash extend Von Miller. And uh, he was hinting in juxtaposition to Ian Rappaport just last week on the Pat McAfee Pat McAfee show that that contract and the way things are trending. It might be the end of Von Miller in Denver. Yeah, it's it's it really is has boiled down to either he restructures this deal or redoes this whole deal. They figure out either add on some years and take down his cap hit, or or he's gone. I I, yeah. I don't think that there's any way that you keep Von at his contract that it, as it is right now. Yeah, I uh, mean four point two two five million dead cap, eighteen million savings in a year where not many teams are going to be able to sign players. And now I know you're not going to be able to replace Von Miller, but the Broncos just went the entire last season without Von Miller. And the defense did not really fall apart until they were down to like, gosh, the, the back end of the back end of the back end in the cornerback room. So it's, it's definitely a possibility. And it's something that we've been talking about here for months now, ever since Von was injured and looking at this contract. I mean, it's been pretty obvious that this was coming down the tracks as a possibility. And at first we got a lot of pushback in the comment section, you know, the Broncos would never do that, blah, blah, blah. I feel like people are kind of starting to accept that this is a potential reality. Now that's not ideal. And that's not to say it will happen, but I mean, with Cliss saying this right now, I think, I think it's a coin flip. I think it's yeah. really legitimately a coin flip if Von Miller is and, back. And I do want to say if it is coming from Cliss, understand it's coming from the team side not usually the player side. Yeah. And so him trying to say that, that could be trying to put pressure on Vaughn's people of, hey, re rework this deal. Get something done because we're real serious about the fact that we might cut you. So understand that that's how that kind of works. Sometimes they do use the media to try to get fan support, try to get everyone on their side. Uh, they, they did that when Vaughn was doing his his contract. Yeah. When back here, what four years, five years ago? I guess it would have uh, been it about right five. Years. Super Bowl. Yeah, but uh, the the team used Mike Kliss trying to say, "Look at this big deal that we offered him." Even though there was very few guarantees, they left that part out of the the conversation, yeah. and uh, it, it got a lot of people going, "Vaughn, how greedy are you?" And uh, so, yeah, again, I, I just make sure you understand, Kliss is always coming from a team side of things. And, you know, talking about Von being greedy, just a caveat real quick. The teams aren't loyal, so I never get bad an eye for when a player chases money or is not loyal to the team. Yeah. You know, because they would get rid of you in an instant if you're not providing value. So, you know, that, that's that's really good spin by, by these teams to be able to turn the fans on these players when they want to leave. But uh, I don't know. I tend to be a little bit more on the player's side, at least understanding it. Um, we got Jess C13 coming in here with a good question that obviously stems from, okay, Von Miller's gone. Next question obviously would be, would a team trade for Miller? What could we get for him? Um, Carl, I'm going to give that to you real quick. Okay. I'm, well, I'm curious. Yeah. So I, I've talked to some people uh, and there are some teams very interested in Vaughn. He, here's the big hang up with the trade. We don't know how the legal side of things are going to play out with all that happened here a month ago or whatever. And so teams are hesitant to want to trade what it would take to get him before they know how that's going to work out. 
It's also why the team is struggling to know, can we redo this deal? Because you don't want to redo it, give him some extra signing bonus or something like that to make it worth his time. And then all of a sudden, boom, hey, you're going to jail or you're suspended, all those kind of things. Uh, but I do know that there are teams who have called the Broncos and said, hey, what is it going to take to get Von Miller? And the price is high, but you do have some teams that are are willing to to pay a pretty penny for, for Von Miller. I, I think I do think that his value would be a first round pick, a late first round pick, I should say. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is how many teams could actually absorb that eighteen million dollar cap hit, right? Yeah. Like, there's there's so few teams that actually have cap space right now. Broncos right. are, I think, fourth right now. So who could actually take that on? And also, it's probably the same exact conversation. We'd love Von Miller for eighteen million, which is what it would cost in a trade. At that point, I'll just. It's it's a game of chicken, you know. Like you guys are saying, you might have to release him. Why am I going to trade for him for eighteen million before I could negotiate a contract on the open market? So uh, it's a complicated situation. I think, yeah, obviously, you know, in a vacuum, Von Miller would have trade value, but when it comes in this weird off season where the Broncos are seemingly up against a wall, they have cap space, but maybe not cash, and they want to have a little bit more flexibility. Um, I just, I'm not sure how much anybody would trade for Von. I mean, obviously, I'd love to get a first for him. But, uh, you know, once players hit that age 30 position, especially uh, non-quarterback, non-specialist positions where typically, you know, downhill quickly after age 30, it just it is what it yeah. is. Uh, you're just you're not going to get a first back. You're, you maybe can get a day three pick. But I think right. teams are going to call Denver's bluff. I think teams call Denver's bluff. And, and they might. Um, I do know one team I saw a couple of play, people in the comments make a, a mention of them, the Browns. They are a team that's looking for an edge guy. I mean, they were just, they were in big time for JJ Watt. They offered more money than what he actually got for, uh, from the Arizona. So that they are big in that market right now. It wouldn't surprise me if they were the ones that ended up trading for Von Miller. They are trying to maximize these last couple of years of, of Baker Mayfield being on his rookie contract. They do have. Some some ability to really manipulate the cap to make his contract work. They are one of the the few teams that I think could be really aggressive and and make that kind of trade. But at eighteen million, I just I don't know if teams are going to be wanting to do that. Especially it's the same exact thing. This is going to be a buyer's market this year, and cap space is going to be at a premium. And the teams that can have it can buy guys that would typically cost ten million a year for like seven and short term as well. So it's like. You know, getting Vaughn is obviously great, but he's coming off an injury. He's going to be 32 years old. He got the legal issues. I just, it's a very weird market. And if I was a team that was interested in him, I'd say, nah, you're going to release him. I'll just negotiate it myself. Also, that there's something we have to talk about as well is Vaughn Miller is a legend. And obviously moving on from him isn't great, but sending him somewhere where he doesn't want to go. I mean, that's, that's a slap in the face to him. That's kind of the thing. Like, obviously the Texans could have gotten something back from JJ Watt, but he asked for his release so he could negotiate where he's going. And I would be surprised if Peyton and the Broncos did not do the same for Von Miller. I think that really does matter for those kind of relationships. Now, you know, if, if it's, if it's not worth it and you'd rather have that fifth round pick, then, you know, so be it. That's, that's on you. But I think that's something you're going to get. Not rebels legacy here real quick. Uh, same thing was said about Wentz and look what they got for him. This is probably the show where we would say a hundred times. Uh, hopefully I'm still here. Carl just dipped out on me a hundred times. It's the quarterback position. That matters yeah. more than anything. And quarterback completely just changes. I, I edge rusher second most valuable, but corner cor- quarterback runs its own market. It's completely different. Right. No, you're, you're right. And you, you just, pro- you uh, froze. You didn't actually lose your voice. So that's, uh, oh, we, we can okay, still well, hear you. Good. We went to radio for a second, uh, but uh, no, you're, you're right. There's, there's a lot, that, a lot of that that plays into it. Um, I, I think if, the Browns miss out on a couple people, though. You could see them really try to get aggressive just because, again, they see their window. And like I said, I, I know that they have already called. I've talked to some people yeah. that I, I trust. They've they've called. Um, but, I mean, you call about a lot of people. I mean, each team's going to make hundreds of phone calls at this time. What is it going to take to get this player? What is it, you know... What are they looking at contract wise? All those kind of things. So uh, yeah. take that with what you will. I, I do think that he does have some trade value, but you're right. Th- there's kind of a weird situation, just like with the legal, with his contract and how it's structured and with the the cap situation, what it's going to be. We still don't even, we don't even know what the cap actually is going to be. I think we're pretty 
pretty confident that it's going to be somewhere between 182 and 185 when pre pandemic, they were talking about 220. Yeah. So like talk about a difference, obviously it's not going down drastically, but pe- teams were assuming, you know, this is, this is an arrow that keeps going up. There's no way it's going to go down and then smack. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be a wild off season and a lot of the cuts are coming. Um, So any chance Miller takes a pay cut and stays, I think it's 50, 50. I really do. I mean, there's obviously a chance Von Miller. I think it was James Palmer. Who's as plugged in as anybody in Broncos uh, on Broncos side uh, said that uh, oh, we got Travis Weber saying, and uh, nice hat, Nick liking the show. Keep it up guys. Carl, where's your hat at buddy? You know, I, the daughters hide it again. <laughs> no, not this time. I Tuesdays, I do a big food box giveaway thing. Okay. And it took a lot longer today than it usually does. And uh, so I, I pretty much went from that to here. Okay. Didn't have All time right. to grab the hat. You're doing, you're doing good work. So I'll let it slide this time. This is the overtime podcast network. <laughs> um, but yeah, Von Miller, I, I definitely think there's a chance that he could uh, restructure. I think it's 50, 50. Obviously you're talking about kicking the can somewhat down the road uh, to future years. And you know, that may be something that's important to the Broncos, a team that's probably going to be sold in the next calendar year. And there could be more money on the way. And then, being able to pay Von Miller when that new financial financial uh, financial structure comes into play. I mean, that's that's all possibility, but it's really interesting. Oh no! I like, I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only one time was behind the toilet. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was kind of funny today. I actually ran into some Broncos fans uh, mm-hmm. at the at the school that my daughter goes to and told them about our show. I don't know if they're tuning in today. But uh, the, but Kansas, baby. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I know. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm finding more and more Bronco fans here in Kansas than I thought. There's a fair I'm, amount I'm a of Australians, shocked. too, in the, sh- the house. So that's really interesting. And we got Malcolm Brown coming in. Malcolm, always good to see you. Uh, Kyle Van Waugh was released. Is he a scheme fit and a salary fit? Um, I think he's kind of a scheme fit. Like, he can do some of that, like, rush off the edge and dropping. But I don't think it's as much a scheme fit as the Bill Belichick defense and yeah. – Good call here, Lucas. This is exactly what I was going to say. I'd be surprised if Van Noy doesn't go back to New England. Yep, that's that's exactly what I think. Yeah i I don't think he's I don't think he's a perfect fit. Yeah, I, I think he does offer a little bit of what they look for of those guys that can rush the passer but can also drop back in coverage. They like that out of their edge players because it allows them to mix in some uh, some creative p- pass rush packages where they can still only send four guys but still have an edge guy going back. So you don't know which four guys are coming. So I, th- there's some Steelers there. zone blitz, Dick LeBeau kind of stuff yep. going on there. The early right. 2000s. Right. And, and so there is definitely some, some value there. I just don't think that he's going to be worth a whole lot. Unfortunately, we were talking he just, earlier, I think I'd be more interested in maybe taking a short-term flyer uh, before the show. We were talking about Hassan Reddick, somebody who's kind mm-hmm. of a, edge rusher, speed rusher, uh, drop back in the coverage. The Broncos move on from Von Miller and Hassan Reddick wants to bet on himself in a scheme that I think he would fit quite well in. That's somebody who I'm interested in. Also, uh, number nine, over, number nine overall pick for the Vic fan geo bears a few years ago, Leonard Floyd is a Von Miller replacement. That one makes a lot of sense as well. Although yep. I do think Floyd has had a pretty good year this year. Uh, I think he's going to have a decent market and yeah. he's obviously the pedigree as well, uh, more so than Reddick does. So it, it will be interesting. It's not like if the Broncos move on, from uh, Miller that there's nothing there. I'm um, also, we got uh, Dupree and you know, as much as I, people like to point at the stats for Malik Reed, obviously I think Bradley Chubb, what I saw was the far better player, more impactful uh, a guy that the opposing blocking scheme identifies as the guy that we have to stop. Um, so, but still you can get by next year if you had to with Bradley Chubb and Malik Reed, it does change the narrative of how soon you need to target an edge, but Still, it's not going to be like this team is going to completely fall apart. Yeah. And and I will say, if the Broncos do go with Malik Reed, this is a great draft depth-wise for Edge. I, yeah. I'm always surprised at how many guys I'm really liking in this draft at that position. I'm liking yeah. a lot of guys that linebacker, especially in that second and third round. I'm liking a lot of Edge guys that could be there in the second and third round. Cornerback. Um, th- this is a really, from about pick 30 to about, pick 100, 120, there's going to be a lot of great defensive talent. That's going to be very, not like, not like superstar kind of guys, but very solid guys are going to stick in the NFL for possibly eight to 10 years. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's true. And uh, we got Mile High Beauty coming in here. We've seen you around. We really do appreciate you coming in. Um, so we're really going to get rid of Vaughn from Leak Reed, who could regress. Um, it is... It's not so much that you're getting rid of Vaughn for Malik Reed. I think that's the wrong way to paint it. It's that Vaughn Miller at 32 years old coming off of a serious injury uh, with $18 million of cap savings you'd move on from in a reduced cap season. You know, it's just like all these factors line up where Denver, you know, they might have to make that tough decision and it would yep. be a bummer, but uh, it's, it could happen. Right. It would be, it would be harmful to the team. I mean, no matter who you bring in. Yeah. Yeah. For the short term, it's going to be harmful. For the long term, it could be the best thing that happens for the team. I mean, that, that's how you have to weigh all of these kind of cap discussions is how is this going to hurt a short term? How is this going to help us long term? Which I one do weighs that, more? And I do think that is very much a uh, George Payton showing his cards as far as the his opinion of this team and their contention window. If you keep Von mm-hmm. Miller, I think this team, from what I'd say, Payton would say like, okay, this team has the bones in place where we could make a run at the playoffs in 2021. If you move on from Von Miller, that's saying like, okay, 2021, probably another kind of transition season. Uh, we're, we're thinking more about 2022, 2023 than 2021, which is probably not what Vic Fangio and the coaching staff want to hear, but that's, <laughs> you know, don't pay attention to what a guy says, pay attention to what they do. Um, right. Speaking of guys who do a lot, uh, Mr. Boggins coming in here, the 499 super. We do appreciate you, Mr. Boggins rocking the Bailey jersey in the background there. Another a handsome, handsomely bearded fellow. Um, if Locke plays the same as he did this last year, how screwed are we in 2022 with the free agent options and the draft? Um, I mean, it really depends on what happens with the Broncos roster surrounding Locke. Like, we obviously know that the quarterback's the most important, but you can have a dud of a quarterback s- strung along to a good season. You know, we've right. seen it with Blake Bortles. We've seen it with Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, we've seen it with Trent Dilfer. I mean, the Joe Flacco Super Bowl year, you know, guys that aren't like top 10, but like team gets hot, quarterback gets hot, things happen. Um, also, a lot of it will depend on what the Broncos do in the draft this year. If they want to trade back from nine, like a lot of people are indicating, you're, you're t- totally talking a totally different conversation if you're picking, let's say, pick 16, but you have another first round pick. You know, that's like about the same as having the eighth overall pick as far as you could package those together and move up. So there's things that have to happen beforehand. And also there's guys like Matt Ryan might be available next year, might be interesting. um, Some other guys as well. So, you know, we'll see you take it year by year, but uh, right. I mean, if they go, if they roll with lock and lock bad again, then, you know, (laughs) quarterback purgatory, here we are. Right. Well, and I, I figure one, you're looking at the cap probably still being down next year Two, You're going to see a lot of guys who sign those one year deals this year with hoping that the cap will go back up so they can get the bigger long-term deal that actually Mm -hmm. pays closer to market value of what they should be getting in a regular year. Uh, So I I think, I mean, you're already seeing it this year. Teams are making cuts like crazy. The free agent market's going to be flooded. So I think you could get some decent bargain players. This is going to be a year where you really, you want to wait for that second and third tier. Man, Mm -hmm. there's going to be some talented players that are going to be impact guys day one for you. That I think you might be surprised by some of the names that you can get for decent contracts. A lot of people say it'll be a mercenary off season. A lot of one year yep. deals, guys go chasing rings and uh, just, you know, I'm not going to maximize my earnings this year. Might as well go to a situation. That's the best for me that I can maximize future earnings. Um, so it will be really interesting. No, oh, this is a good question. Obviously, Carl, you and I do a lot of draft work. Um, who's the player to tank for in 2022? Um, I'll, I'll leave it to you first. Cause I have two guys that stick out in my mind that I am, they're just like, I'm, I love for 2022. Okay. Uh, one for me would be, so none of mine would be quarterback. See, unfortunately, there, there's the lick, right? Like yeah. none of them are worth tanking for if none of them are quarterback, but okay. Okay. Continue. And so, you know how terrible I am with names, but the edge from Oregon, uh, Thibodeau, uh, Thibodeau, Kavion, yeah. Thibodeau. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. He, he would be, he'd be easily a top five pick in this draft. And yep. I think Miami would have a hard time trading off of number three outside of going to get Deshaun Watson passing Thibodeau. I mean, he is insane. People are talking about like, uh, gosh, who's the Elijah Vera Tucker, like Thibodeau <laughs> destroyed him. Like he's yeah. <laughs> Elijah Vera Tucker is good, but Thibodeau is like, Oh my God. Like, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. That's one. So that, I had that, three. That, would be my, that would be my guy. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if anybody else real quick off the top of my head, I got a couple here. Um, okay. They're both defensive backs. Derek Steenley okay. Jr. Uh, ex- oh, insane yes. tools. 
Uh, you don't see guys with his size move like he does. Uh, wasn't as good uh, this past year as he was two years ago, but that's true for the whole LSU team. But I'm betting on traits. I mean, that kid, he just moves differently. You don't see guys with his size move like he does. Reminds me a lot of Patrick Peterson. Um, the next one is somebody who I, I love myself a very good versatile safety that can play single high, two high, come down and play the slot, can play the box, can even do some out to wide stuff. Everybody's talking about Jeremiah Usakoromoa. He was not the best safety de- defensive back with back seven player, whatever the heck you want to call him on that defense. Kyle Hamilton on Notre Dame. Pay attention to number 14. That kid, Minka Fitzpatrick. That's, I mean, that's who he is. He's Minka Fitzpatrick. I love Kyle Hamilton. That hurts me because I am a Notre Dame golden domer hater, you know, but, yeah. but uh, okay. Well, um, we got, uh, oh, there, there, there's the guy, honestly. I know that it's been a talking point, like, oh, everybody always underrates the following year's quarterback class. I think that's bull spit. I think people mm-hmm. tend to overrate the upcoming season until they get a more critical eye, and then they kind of regress, which I think even further should concern you about the 2022 quarterback class. Yeah, um, I, I think at this point next year, everybody's going to be talking about DJ Ugalele, who is the right. guy who's going to step in for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, arm from the gods. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. <laughs> Right. And, and I'd say that's something to, to look at for this class that really none of the guys that were at the top fell. I mean, Justin Fields, maybe most people expect him to go number two overall, but I think the only reason he's maybe fallen is just because other guys have risen up of, I mean, Trey Lance is expected to be maybe that top 10, top 15 kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he lost his season. He might've been the guy that got hurt the most. He had a chance to really cement himself as not only a top three quarterback, but maybe top three pick kind of yeah. guy. And uh, of course, then Zach Wilson coming through. He had some great moments. I, I think this is something people forget. He was on the radar before this past season. Uh, I went back and watched some of his games from 2019. He made some bonehead throws that he did not this last year, but you still saw the arm talent. You still saw the creativity ability to, really move around in the pocket by himself. Mm-hmm. Sometime you saw him throwing sidearm. You saw him doing all the things he did this year. He just did it better this year than years past. So yeah. I, I still think he would have been a guy that a lot of people were already talking about anyway, in the NFL circles. Um, yeah. But all those guys really rose to the occasion showed. Well, unfortunately you saw other positions like defensive tackle. Nobody rose up and the guys that ex- you expected to hey, be Davion there. Nixon. Davion Nixon rose up from. Okay. Okay. I'll give nowhere. you, I'll give you yeah. him. But uh, you saw a lot of guys who hurt themselves this past year by a lot of their play. Um, And and so, yeah, it's kind of interesting looking at that kind of discussion. But you're right. I I don't think there's anybody. And and it's partly because you just don't see the tools in a lot of the guys for that 2022 class. You You see above average tools. You don't see elite traits. Like we knew Josh Allen had elite traits before his his junior or his senior season. Yeah, you knew it. I mean, we knew uh, about Trevor Lawrence, yeah, and Justin Fields but as re- recruits, right? You know, like the, it's it's a little different. I think it is a little different. I agree with you there. Um, this is a great transition. Rebels Legacy laying us up a uh, easy transition pass here. I feel like one to two more corners and a sideline to sideline LB uh, from a very dominant defense. Well, also in that Mike Kliss interview, he had a quote here. Um, uh, for sure. Uh, the, as far as the offseason plan, uh, for sure he's going to get a cornerback. I'm not sure if he will get the top end cornerback in free agency or not, but they need two, at least two. I think uh, they will come with one away in the draft, high in the first and second round. I also think they'll come away with one in free agency. Um, they also have been chasing a linebacker with some speed. Uh, there's not a whole lot of those guys in the type, the, not a lot of those types of guys in this draft, so speed linebackers. Uh, and then he said he's going to fill out the offensive line because Jawan James is an unknown, something that uh, I've been, I feel like I was, Last year, I was an anti-tackle bro because I really hate people focusing in on a singular position unless it's quarterback because, <laughs> again, quarter, quarterback operates in its own universe. Um, but uh, this year, I'm thinking like, well, you know, like obviously Sewell's the only one I really feel great about at nine. But if you trade back in that 15 to 25 range, the guys that I like the most are tackles. Like, I just think that's the best value in return. So um, great, great transition there. What do you take away from uh, Kliss's, uh thoughts there? Double dipping at cornerback, free agency and early in the draft, speed at linebacker. And I almost gave the middle finger on that one. And uh, then a right tackle. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That well, I mean, he hit all the positions that, that you and I have talked about. Uh, and we've said that they need multiple cornerbacks. I, I think that's pretty obvious to about anybody out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I still think, I still think Ojibudia can be a guy. 
in this league. I think he can be a really solid number two cornerback. I don't really see number one kind of traits, but uh, but he, you still don't know exactly what he is. Callahan, mm-hmm. again, we've talked about the injuries that he's never played 16 games in a season. So to bank on that, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. And in today's NFL, you need at least four cornerbacks to really function at a high level. And right now the Broncos have one and a half. Yep. I mean, I, this is something that uh, I think it was Bill Belichick talked about a few years ago at a coaching clinic. And he said that offenses dictate where the ball goes. So having one great cornerback is great, but you need depth in the secondary because if you have one guy who doesn't belong and that guy is identified, you are going to get picked apart. I mean, we saw year after year with Peyton Manning. It didn't matter. The Broncos had champ Bailey because the guy across from him couldn't (laughs) hang. So, you know, you have to have, I I believe in the defensive front quality in the back seven quantity, especially in the defensive backfield. And we've seen it the last two seasons. Broncos have not had the needed depth at the cornerback position specifically. So they got it. They got to get on it. It makes sense. They spend for a guy and uh, bring somebody up and we can talk about some names here in a second. Wanted to get to Hunter, uh, Wurtenen, uh, hopefully nailed that one there. Let us, if I ever get your name wrong, guys, please let us know. Uh, Cause I want to get those right. If you're going to come around here and support us, then by gosh, I need to get your name right. <laughs> I'm just here to support you guys. Your content is always rock solid. Keep it up. Well, Hunter, we really do appreciate that. That is a, uh, that means a lot. I mean, it really does. We're, we're out here because, you know, we love talking ball, but it's really about the community, right? Like the fact that we can have engage in this conversation with this platform with you guys is what makes it special. I'm also coming in here. Uh, from Hunter again. Also, would you guys prefer Sam Darnold over Locke? Not sure if this was asked yet. Uh, Carl, you are the biggest, you were the biggest Sam Darnold fan I know. Now, granted, you know, that, that's not that's not a shot because I liked Josh Rosen. That's probably a big reason I am scared to death of Mac Jones and like Trey Lance, just an overcorrection. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I'm human. But uh, Hunter here, Sam Darnold over Locke. Do you like him? Yes, I, I do. Uh, I, I don't, th- this is the hard part because both guys have, have pretty much the same problem. They have moments of greatness. They have moments of glimpses of what they could be if you saw their traits fully pay off, surrounded by a lot of bad play. Mm-hmm. And now, Sam Darnold, the, the question you have to ask yourself, is it because of his coach, who has been proven to be a quarterback killer? Or, <laughs> I mean, his entire yeah, resume is... Just, no, his entire resume is I coach Peyton Manning. Yeah, great. No. I, I wish I could, you know, anybody could have stepped into that and done a great job. Um, but uh, I still think Sam Darnold has a lot of great traits that could really turn into something in the NFL. Is he broken? I don't know. He's unfortunately, than yeah, he is. Uh, and uh, I think he's got better arm talent than Drew Locke does. I think he's got better accuracy than Drew Locke does. Yeah. I think he's got a little bit better mind for the game than Drew Locke does. I, I think athletically speaking, I mean, running wise, I think they're about even in that kind of category. And, and so I think Sam Darnold, Darnold has a little bit of a, a a ledge above Drew Locke, but is it enough to go and trade what it's going to take to get Sam Darnold? That, that's the question. Is it really worth it when you could just use that pick to surround Drew Locke with better talent? I think they're in the I, I don't same know if bucket. that's worth it. It just would depend on what they're asking. Yeah, I have him in the same bucket. So if Sam Darnold was a free agent, I would be yeah. interested. But the fact that you have to give up probably 40 overall, I, I no thank you. I'll probably pass on that one. So, and also, I had this conversation with Luke on Saturday. There are teams that are going to be so desperate for quarterback that they're going to be wanting, they'll be willing to trade more than what the Broncos are. I mean, there's teams that just have no yeah. answer at quarterback right now. So right. Um, it will be interesting to see what happens. Um, we got Michael... Carvanis coming in here. Um, all four are there in the second. Who are you taking at backer? Bolton, Cox, Barron, Moses. Who are you going with? Um, I mean, gosh, that's a. I'll let you go first, Carl, because I don't really. Okay. I like some of these guys, um, but uh, I don't know if I love any of them at forty. It's a, it's a yeah. deep linebacker class. I I would. What Dylan just said, I, I'd probably go with Cox. Okay. Uh, just his athleticism, his already proven coverage ability. That's something that the Broncos don't have at the linebacker position right now. I think he, he comes in even as a rookie and plays a very significant role in that defense. Some of the other guys, there, there's some questions when it comes to the, the coverage side of it. 
uh, of how consistent they can be in that kind of role. Cox, I, I'm very, uh, yeah, that, that'd be another guy. Jameen Davis, yeah, uh, would be a great name to, to add to the list here. But um, I was going to say, I, I just, Davis. <laughs> good job, John Boy. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I, I just, I think he has, he's the guy that I have the clear cut. This is what he's going to be when he gets to the NFL of those four. I like how much that he was able to play in the box and then kick out and play like an overhang kind of nickel position as well. It's not that Jeremiah Wusa Koromoa where he play when he comes in his plays between the tackle, you know, he has to duck around guys because he cannot disengage from blocks. I just did not see that from Cox. So I really do like Cox Moses. Uh, I mean, he never looked the same after his what, 2018 season. They had that injury. Just he, yeah. he did not look that good this year. Bolton. I like his solid, some big hits, uh, but man, he is so stubby. I just really worry about his ability to disengage from blockers consistently. Baron Browning, freak athlete, never really put it all together at Ohio State. Is he maybe a better like hybrid edge rusher kind of thing? I mean, he, he has some really interesting edge rush snaps because he's so bursty. But I, you know, linebacker is one of those positions where it's a processing position. You know, you have to have some level of athleticism, but you can get by if you are a processor and can make like intelligent decisions and see the game. And, uh, you know, that's how guys like Josie Jewell, you know, not a good athlete, not a big guy, but he's not terrible out there. You know, you, you can you can get by like the Broncos did this year with him. Obviously, you want to upgrade if you can. But still, I think that Browning scares me because that's it's such a heady position. He just had not shown those instincts. So much more of a uh, see ball, go chase ball kind of guy. Yeah. But uh, Jaman, Jermaine Davis, six, four, seven foot wingspan, 225 pounds. I mean. You talk about guys with some rocket skates on him. I'm interested. And I also really like uh, Cameron McGrone from Michigan. That's another name as well. So it's, I mean, if the Broncos don't take, I see a lot of people like, oh, the Broncos have to take Zayvon Collins or Jeremiah Wusa cormo or Micah Parsons in the first. Like, there are linebackers to be had day two guys. Like, we, yeah. I would be stoked about a number of these linebackers day two. Right. No, you're, you're right. And I, I see some people talking about what are your thoughts on on Sternod uh, here from Tim Durr and a few others were asking about him. Um He's solid, but I think there's some guys in this class that offer higher upside and what they can bring because their athletic profile trumps what he brings to the table. Sernat is is a good, not great player. I, I just think his his ceiling is very limited by his lack of athleticism. Kind of the same with Josie Jewell. You know, mm-hmm. smart player, you're never going to find him out of position hardly ever. He's he's going to do the right thing for you, but there's still just because of the limitations, you're always looking to replace him because you're looking for more athleticism being put on the field. I mean, I'm a Hawkeye. I try to be so analytical and not biased when it comes to the Broncos, but I throw that out the freaking window when it comes to my Hawkeyes, right? Like unless they're trying to evaluate him draft wise, but like, you know, I love myself a Josie Jewell. Josie Jewell is probably only as valuable as he is on his rookie contract. Right. Like you can plug and play for a while and he's on his rookie deal. But like, you know, those guys, you just turn them in and out. You draft, play them for a bit. All right. Yeah. Thank you. While you were cheap. Um, we'll see what we can uh, do with this next batch of rookies. Um, so we'll be really interesting. Casey Martin coming in here. Uh, good evening. Uh, the best MHH show going. Casey, we appreciate that. Uh, go pound that in the iTunes review. Honestly, if, if you're really feeling that fresh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't hold your feet to the fire or anything, but uh, th- that would be amazing. <laughs> just let them know. And the Stranod questions. Um, I think Stranod is interesting. Uh, he's a guy that Vic Fangio spoke highly of, but you're talking about a fifth round pick, right? Like obviously he can bring, he raises the floor of the room because you've got another body that might be able to do something, but like, are you depending on him? How much can he play like base package next year? Uh, you have him, but like how much does he bring? You know, I, I got to see it on the field before I can bet on him, especially as a fifth round pick. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Maybe I should keep uh, my hands off. Not me, baby. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Hand check. Uh, Holden Adams coming in here. Really appreciate the super chat. Love the picture. Oh, yeah. man. I can't wait to see Sutton back on the Sutton. field. It is is a thing of beauty. That is for sure. But uh, he, he asked a question. Who and which round are you taking an offensive tackle? Need a guy that can step in for slash replace James. So I mean... I hate the answer is probably guys like you could see the Broncos bringing back like an Elijah Wilkinson just to make sure that you're not, you know, caught with your shirt off and your pants down kind of thing. You know, that's not what anybody wants to hear, but 
that's just kind of the reality of hedging your bets and getting a guy who knows the system or somebody of an equivalent of Wilkinson. Uh, so not great. Um, as far as guys who I think you could take an offensive tackle, it's going to be really interesting. There's a lot of good offensive tackles. I'll just throw out a couple late round guys, uh, probably late day two, early day three um, that interest me. Uh, I really do think Spencer Brown is a right tackle that if he was there round three, I might jump, even though he might need a year to get integrated. Uh, Northern Iowa, not University of Iowa, Northern Iowa kid. Um, I think he, I mean, weight room warrior doesn't always funk or doesn't always translate to the field, uh, but he's so big and athletic that I think I'm going to bet it that he figures it out. Uh, the other guy who was not on my radar at all until the senior bowl, but like guys with link and guys that can move and have some positional versatility, I'm always in. Deontay Smith from Eastern Carolina, he belonged. And he might have to have a year in the weight room to kind of get that strength going. Uh, but, you know, if, if he's there early round four where the Broncos are picking, I'm in. I, I really think Deontay Smith is a guy who can develop uh, into yeah. a starting tackle. And uh, tackle is one of those positions where there's so few guys that have the athleticism and the body type to hang that it's almost a first round position or not. You know, if you, you get those guys are identified by the league at such a good rate, like you say what you will about the drafting and identifying talent. The tackles they get right most of the time. So if yep. you want one, you probably need to take them in the top 40 in the least, if not round one. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the other position that it shows that same way is edge rusher. And and cornerback. Yeah. Those are the ones yeah. that they just like, especially, yeah, you're talking edge rusher. You're also talking like body types as well. Like it's just a rigor type. Like you have guys like, you know, the, he, he's really had good at tackles last few years, but he's six foot three and has 33 inch arms. Like, Sorry, like to deal with the freaking superheroes that play edge rusher in the NFL. I think you're already behind the eight ball. It's the same thing. The, the, the offensive tackle for North Dakota state, uh, Dylan Raddins. Like I was arguing with somebody, not arguing, but discussing with somebody on Twitter, like, Oh, he could be the next great tackle. I'm like 33 and a quarter inch arm length, you know, like it concerns me a little bit. Like he just did not hit that threshold. He could overcome it, but like he's yeah. battling against that. And it's just like, Ugh. and then you have somebody like, again, how many times can I say Iowa's class? Al- Alaric Jackson. Some people thought he could be a late uh, day two kind of guy. Comes in at like six six with thirty two and a half arm length. I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you in the NFL. So it will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. This is why I know a lot of people say the combine is overrated, but those measurements, like the, the, there is a certain minimum threshold that you need players to meet. Like it, yeah. it doesn't. As long as they meet that, then you begin to build from that. But there's very few guys that don't meet that minimum threshold that all of a sudden becomes something in the NFL. It's yeah. just that, I mean, that's the way the, the league works. You, you need you need that minimum level, <laughs> just an athletic build of how your body is built. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so that that does matter more than people realize. That there's a couple of exceptions here and there, but if you are drafting to f- find the exception you're probably not drafting well. There's a reason that they are the exception. You. Yeah. You're yeah. like, you want to take the same hit rate or, you know, the same chance of your, the same investment, but you have one that's less likely to hit. Like, why would you invest in that? Um, so that's always a concern. We got a uh, Tyler Randall coming here. Tyler with a pick coming in got the fresh hairdo, got the, the facial here. Tyler's only, only been like a TR picture in the background. So Tyler, good to put a face to the name. Thank you very much. Uh, how many CBs and DBs do you think we take in total? Also, what are the odds of trading back? Thanks for all you guys do. Hashtag DB4L, hashtag MHH4L. Uh, Tyler, we appreciate it. Um, I mean, gosh, if the Broncos went two of their first three picks on defensive backs, I wouldn't bat an eye. This team needs a shot in the arm in the secondary. I think, that, I mean, as Cliff said, you have to do that. As far as the odds of trading back, I think the odds of trading back right now are 50-50. I have, of course, because this is how I work and I painted in my mind, so I'm going to be upset no matter what seven guys right now that I would be okay with, with the ninth overall pick. If not, I want them to trade back and uh, four of them are quarterbacks. Uh, so, and the Broncos picking nine, I bet you all of them are gone by, by nine, but that's just kind of how it is. I was the same way in the 2018 draft. I was like, Oh man, I got like six guys that I'd like at 10. Please. One of them. Nope. Of mm-hmm. course not. You can't have nice things. <laughs> um, but what do you think here, Carl? Yeah, I, I think probably good chance that two go in the top 100 just because it is such a need. And also, I mean, if you don't have it in the NFL, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, and then I think overall, it would not surprise me, especially if the Broncos trade back, seeing at least four guys for the secondary. 
the great thing with safeties, especially, is they are great special teams guys early on. So yeah. you can at least develop those guys as you are trying to figure out what you're going to do with Kareem Jackson moving forward. Mm. Um, There's a transition and, for you. Let's we should transition there. Okay, so John Clayton came out with a report here recently pretty much saying that there is a very good chance that Kareem Jackson is not going to be with the Broncos. Most like, yep. John Clayton report today. Kareem Jackson, most likely cut. Thank you, Noel. Um, I'm really torn on this one because yeah. Kareem has been a integral part of this defense and I hate to make more holes than needed uh, mm-hmm. because I mean, you're going to have to replace that player and you need a guy that can come down the box and drop back in coverage that's not always easy to find, especially a rookie trying to step into that kind of position. Uh, I mean, we, we saw even with uh, with Justin Simmons when he transitioned into this Vic Fangio defense. Like we knew there's a good chance that Justin Simmons could become a star, but mm-hmm. it, it took him time because this yeah. is a very complicated defense when it comes to the safety position. There's other spots that are a lot more simple in this defense that you can step in, be a day one starter. Boom, let's go but there are other positions you need some time to develop and safety is one of those. And so that's why, especially when you just don't have a guy on the roster right now that I sit there and say, Hey, that's a guy that's going to have his time to develop and really become that next guy for you. They don't have that right now. So I I just feel like that would be a huge blow to the defense. Yeah. I mean, Kareem Jackson is one of those guys that actually has lived up to his contract to date. I know they paid him a good deal, but I think he's, you know, they've had surplus value on the return and they can save, uh, let me see if they move on from him, they can save 10 million this year. Oh, that is pretty enticing uh, with only 2.82 million in dead cap. Uh, That's a guy that I would love to approach with a restructure, maybe giving him an extension, keep him around for another two, three years, because he's one that safeties are a position that actually can age pretty well uh, because it is another heady position. And uh, Jackson was a really good athlete that's already transitioned from boundary corner to safety so uh, I'm hoping that they can keep him around and I'm with you too. Like I do not want to be in a position where like you moved on from cream Jackson and I know Will Parks is a fan favorite, but I'm sorry guys. Like he's, he's a third safety. Like I just don't, I mean, if he's your starting safety, you're probably looking to replace him, right? Like the, the Eagles moved on from him. Like it was nothing. So uh, I love him as a third safety. And I think he's a kind of a, he's a, he's a great guy as well, but you know, I'm talking football yeah. here. Um, and, so I don't want to create another hole. Like that's, that's yeah. the biggest thing. You don't want to go in having to take a safety. And I keep seeing the name Richie Grant come up. I like him. There you I do. Do you want to be pigeonholed to have to go Richie Grant at 40? Yeah. That scares me. Oh, that's, and not, that's not good team building. Here, here's my, my issue. He is great in coverage. Terrible. Not always a great tackler. Yeah. And so <laughs> Kareem Jackson, one of the best tacklers on the team. He is a guy that's flying down, making plays. I mean, he, he's, he's won games with some of his big plays. And so that that's one thing that really makes me nervous of the Richie Grant. I feel like he's more of, and, and you and I have talked about this before. It, it's not free safety, strong safety with this Broncos defense, but I, I'd still say that you see Justin Simmons dropping back more and field and boundary. Right. <laughs> um, and and I, I just, I feel like if you're going to replace cream Jackson, you need a guy that can come down, fly down and make plays in the run game. And I'm not yeah. sure that Richie Grant is that guy. Now, if they draft him, I'm going to be excited for what it brings in the pass game because I mean, Hey, that's great. Have two great pass coverage safeties back there. It really allows you to mix things up however you want to do it. But uh, I I would worry that our run defense would take a huge hit. I also think he's 25 years old, which I just said, obviously safety doesn't matter if they're that much older, but still, you know, that's less years where you can see them getting to that plateau. You know, there's less growth that they're heading towards. So and and it is almost a rookie contract. Yeah. Yep. So it will be interesting. I mean, that's one where if the Broncos move on from Kareem Jackson, I'm thinking that you trust Vic Fangio and the Peyton and whoever to find a bargain bin kind of guy that can come in and you're probably going to get better year one return than any safety you could draft. Right. Like that's probably what it is. You know, like uh, everyone get your drink ready, but like Desmond King safety slash slot. I mean, for the versatility that he brings, I, I think he's a great fit and a great tackler for this defense. And if they move on from Kareem Jackson and, Desmond King wanted to take a one year, $7 million deal. Giddy up, baby. I'm in. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll be interested to see what happens there. Um, the last bit I wanted to get on to news wise uh, before we get out of here. Um, should, do we get Simmons and Harris resigned? 
I would say it's increasingly unlikely. And Mike Kliss just recently had a tidbit also in his interview about uh, Shelby Harris, uh, where he said that with Jarrell Casey being cut, you have Mike Purcell coming back for a season and Liz Frank injury is going to be 30 years old. It's not going to be easy for him to get back to full strength. Shelby has been a big part of the defensive line for the last four years. He's been highly productive. If he's going to get 10 million plus a year, which is what he tried to get last year, uh, then he's probably gone. If this, if it happens this year, I think it's going to be difficult for the Broncos to bring Shelby Harris back. So the Broncos will be looking at other free agents, maybe a little bit more team fr- favorably in the financial department as far as filling gaps along the defensive front. Uh, I know nobody wants to hear it. Everybody's got their fan favorites. Shelby Harris seems like a great guy. Uh, he was great against the Chiefs and the Chargers this year, and probably one of the biggest reasons they were in those games. Um, but ten million a year for a thirty-year-old interior defensive lineman. Uh, it seems like the Broncos are heading to a, not a breakup, but a parting, a split of the roads. Yep. Yeah. It, it kind of sounds like the two sides have figured out. They kind of want him to go test the market and, and come he back. should get that money, man. This is his chance. Yes. Yeah, Shelby. The, I love you. I, go get paid. This is your right. chance, buddy. You're 30 years old, like from seventh round pick from Illinois state. This is your chance for money, baby. Go, like if somebody pays you, you don't owe anything to Denver. Right, right. No, I, I agree. And it does sound like that of they're going to go let them test the market and then come back and say, hey, this is what a team's offering me. You guys willing to pay that? If not, hey, I'm going to go sign with this other team. So, But that usually means if he hits the market, good chance he's going to get paid. Last year was kind of a, an anomaly. He had a really bad agent that really hyped him up and made him believe that he was going to get top position money. And it just obviously kind of blew up in his face when some teams were making legitimate offers, but kind of going, Hey, you're more in that six to 7 million kind of range, not the 15 million range. And he's just like, "Ah, somebody will pay me. And uh, Nope. Didn't happen. And so then he had to take that one year deal and, and obviously stuck with the Broncos because Hey, knows the defense knows that he can be successful in the system. And I really hope it pays off this off season. Yeah. Yeah. Don't play him at nose. Uh, but, uh, so unfortunately that could mean that he's gone, but nice thing is usually the, the one position that is flooded in free agency with pretty decent talent, defensive line into your defensive linemen. Those guys, I mean, Akeem Hicks could become available. Henry Anderson just was released today that there's going to be somebody there that the Broncos probably can bring in that. Yeah. Maybe you're not getting like Cliff said, maybe you're not getting Shelby Harris back, but maybe you get, you know, a, three quarters of the production for half the price. Yep. And that's just math, baby. Um, <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Rain will come in, in here. $5. We did talk about this earlier, but I think I got an interesting spin for this one. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on Miami cutting Van Noa after just one year of his big signing? The Miami Dolphins, say what you will about them, they do not buy into the sunk cost fallacy. If a guy doesn't fit, move on. And that's something, you know, it stinks to have that dead cap. But, uh, you know, if the guy's not, not fitting in there what are you doing you know you're just right. wasting time and that's something and, i it costs the broncos more money to move on from juan james and to keep him but let's that's one that may, gives me a little bit of pause because you could just hold on to him there but like if juan james is not gonna play then like you know oh, my cat's about to make an appearance here they said hey you're at an hour now sorry sorry kitty let's get out of here um but uh no it's uh that's one that i come back to it's just a little different because it actually costs more to move on from james than to keep him Right. Uh, and this is one thing I do worry about Vanoy is that that maybe the Patriots is the only system that he really works in. That they know what his skill set is and how to how to maximize that. Now he had a great year for the Patriots that last year, but really other than that last year, he was a pretty below average player. And then he goes to Miami, which should have been a decent fit because hey, Flores was uh was coming from the Patriots. But even there, it wasn't quite the seamless transition as they were hoping. And so I, I just worry about that. Of if After one season, they're going, this guy's not a fit. Is he going to be a fit anywhere else? I don't know. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. And also, Shane Trent making me go on Twitter to think that a trade just happened. Shame on you. for <laughs> I had to validate it before I or verify it before I flash it up there. So uh, that's not happening. <laughs> that didn't happen, at least as far as I can see. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Carl, we're at an hour. Any uh, thoughts before we get out of here? Any, we talked about Broncos going after cornerbacks. 
We talked about the Broncos, interior defensive line, linebacker. We've talked a lot about draft, obviously, but who, who are some of the free agents here that interest you for a cornerback um, and interior defensive line specifically? Is this is this true? Breaking news: Baltimore and Jacksonville. That's what I said was not true. Round. Nope, I looked it up. No. I just I was just saying like, oh, I looked. See, he's laughing. Look at this. Oh, what okay. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you got me. He got, got me I, with that Carl, fake even, news. I'm sorry, you did. I'm sorry. I was reading while you were talking, and uh, I'm not good at multitasking. I'm sorry, man. Proof that Carl doesn't listen to my hot air either. <laughs> not my wife. Not my co-host. Not the listener. No, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah interior no. defensive line. I, or interior defensive linemen and cornerbacks that interest you in the free agency class cycle. Um, I'm trying to remember all the people that are supposed to be hitting the market here. Um, so, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember a couple of names off the top of my head. Sheldon Rankins would be one that would interest me. Eric loves him. What about your boy, Dalvin Tomlinson? He's probably, probably too expensive, but I know you loved him in that. Draft I did. Cycle. I did. Uh, I, I think he's, I, I loved him in the draft process. I, I loved him because I knew if nothing else, he's going to be a great run defender. Mm -hmm. Like, if the guy has that ability, I at least know, hey, they're going to bring something to the table. Yeah. Sometimes these guys that come in that you hope are going to be these pass rushing specialists, uh, Demarcus Walker, and they can't be that. Well, then they don't have that other skill set to fall back on. That that's yeah. where it starts getting into some some issues there. Um, I would be very I'm interested to... if Akeem Hicks becomes available. Um, but if not Akeem Hicks, somebody that the Vic Fangio defensive guys uh, developed, Roy Robertson Harris, been an interior a depth guy for them. But the Broncos are looking for kind of a five tech, three tech. This guy is super long, got some pass rushing chops as well. He interests me a lot. If you're looking at a little bit more uh, money side, do you think there's any chance the Broncos would bring back Derek Wolf? I know it's crazy, but like <laughs> he's available, like a one year deal coming back to play in a scheme that he was pretty good here in 2019. Yeah, I, I think that's a real possibility. I, I think he really loved Denver. I mean, obviously he signed a second contract mm -hmm. and I think his family really liked it here. So it wouldn't surprise me. I don't think he left on the worst of terms yeah. per se. I, I don't think it was the best of terms. But I don't think it was the worst either. Did so you I, see I them think that's that a contract that Shelby Harris had this year. Was it one year, 3.5 million and switching it over to uh, Derek Wolf? <laughs> Is he going to take that? In this off season cycle with how little teams have to, to pay, how many teams can't pay at all. I don't know. I mean, he might not even get that. Yeah. So um, I, I'm way more interested in the cornerback market. Uh, just to list some names here, but they would go on for a while. Uh, William Jackson's probably the crown jewel out there. Uh, he's really talented. Shaquille Griffin, still pretty young. I think he would fit this scheme. Even though he did, was drafted for a cover three, I think he can play the match quarters. Um, I'm interested yep. in Xavier Rhodes. Uh, he was obviously Peyton knows Rhodes uh, being there with Minnesota for a while. Rhodes had a terrible 2019 season, really good this last year in Indianapolis in a scheme that plays, Hey, guess you guessed it uh, off coverage, off zone coverage on the boundary. And uh, that's exactly what he would be doing here. And uh, it should be a woozy, obviously another guy who would make sense here. And one that I, I mean, I think Desmond King would be a good fit, if, especially if the Broncos move on from Kareem Jackson to have that nickel ability. You don't know what Kareem Jackson or uh, Bryce Callen, can he play the whole season? Saying Bassey coming off an injury to have a safety uh, slot hybrid, which is what Desmond King does that can tackle and has ball skills as well and, and can provide a uh, return ability. I mean, that's, I would love to get him. And that's probably yeah. just me being biased as a Hawk, but I, I think he's just such a good scheme fit. I really do. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. So I, I think there's some, some decent names out there. I don't think there's any real true number one guys that you're saying, this is our guy that we're, we're really banking on to be that true star for us in the secondary like that. Um, but, but there's still some really solid guys. And really, I do think even though a Fangio defense does shine its brightest when it has a true star cornerback, it's still also. I mean, it functions, obviously. If you've got three solid, four solid guys across the, the board that you can really depend on doing their job. He can still yeah. mix things up. It's it's not as great as what he had with uh, with Chicago, having a, a true number one cornerback, or even when he was in San Francisco. Um, but but he can still make it work. I mean, that, that's the great thing about his defense is it is multiple in how he can attack teams. I mean, he even switched up this last year. All the injuries, he's like, "All right, we got to play a different style of defense," and it wasn't perfect, but he made it work with the talent that he had. Yep. That's uh that's a good one. Um, we got Richie Rich who, uh, sent me a blue steel 
level picture today when we were talking about uh, your beard game. He sent me one. He, his eyes, those blues, man, the daggers. <laughs> we appreciate you, Richie. Rich. Can you turn uh, Nick and Carl, uh, do you guys see any young IDL guys which might be good options to trade for during the draft? I think he's asking specifically about guys in the draft. Typically, you're not going to see young interior defensive linemen that are worth trading for uh, that are already on teams being traded for. Um, uh, Davion Nixon, I, Davion Nixon, I like, but I don't really like him as much in this scheme. I feel like he's a one gap penetrating three technique and that's just me. I mean, he seems like a great person and very fun, a lot of energy, but, uh, we're talking actual scheme fit. I, I don't know if he's the best there. It's just yeah. a really bad interior defensive line class guys. I, so bad. I, I don't know what to tell you. I really like, um, Aline <laughs> McNeil from North Dakota state or not, excuse me, um, uh, North Carolina state, the other, there you go. one of the other end states. Um, he's really fun. I think he played at like three thirty this year. And uh, he's going to get down to like 310, 315, heck of an athlete. Um, I also really like uh, Billy Brown from Texas A&M. I don't think he's getting much hype right now, but he might have the strongest hands in the class. Uh, so it would be really interesting. Oh, no, guys on teams like Quinn Williams or Deron Payne. Um, the Broncos aren't in a position probably to be giving up draft capital, young cost control guys, unless it's for a quarterback. You don't yeah. really start to make those moves until that question is answered. And you just you just don't know right now. Unless right. you're getting him for a bargain, and, but in that I case, mean, somebody's going to want him more, I'm sure. Right. I was going to say, I mean, Quinn and Williams, it's going to take nine. It would probably take, it would take nine. Yeah. To get a guy like that of, I mean, he, he went what third overall. Mm-hmm. Yep. And no uh, so, and he's still got a couple more years of, of cost control. And he was awesome this year. Slow rookie year into your defensive lineman guys. They take linemen in general. They take a year to kind of, you got to mm-hmm. let them get in that weight room, understand the scheme. It's why I'm not really worried about Lloyd Cushenberry and maybe, maybe a little bit worried about McTelvin Ajim, but not like really worried because it was always going to take a year. Yep. It was always going to take a year. So if he's not, you know, if you don't see him this year, that's when you can start to have some red yeah. flags. Um, and- Todd Ostendorf, you got to talk about Christian Barmore. I really don't like how uh, his motor is so on and off um, when he plays great. It's good. I also think he's going to be overvalued because this interior defensive line class is cheeks. So <laughs> just, somebody needs an interior yeah. defensive lineman. They're going to be like, Oh my God, if I don't get Barmore, I'm screwed. You don't want to be yeah. in that position. So I'm much more and Broncos aren't going to be screwed. Though. I mean, obviously you have Purcell coming back, which is a concern, but I think with Draymond Jones already there and Deshaun Williams played pretty well down the stretch. Like that, that raises mm-hmm. the floor of that room. I'm, I would not completely discount him. You don't want to start him. I don't think, but like you got him there. So you just need, a Shelby Harris replacement, even if it's not to the same quality and you will be yep. okay. Obviously I'd rather have it as a strength, but still. Right. Right. I think if you can have it as an above average group with maybe the potential for star power because of, of Draymond Jones, I, I think that that's fine for what you're really asking that unit to do. And mm-hmm. you can still have a top 10, top 15 defense easily. I, I mean, heck the Broncos had that this last year. Even with all the injuries, they were still right there around that 15th mark when you're talking about defensive ability. Um, so, uh, yeah, Barmore. And that was despite I, the defense, the offense turning the ball over like candy at Halloween. Yeah. You know, that hurts. <laughs> yeah. That hurts a good defense. Right. And yeah, Ajim, we'll, we'll see what he really becomes. I, I don't know. I, I really, the, the, there's so much potential there. He's one of those players that just kind of like Barmore. You saw flashes. You saw moments that you're like, this is why he was a, a five-star recruit. And then you see other times where you're just like, did he even play that game? I know mm-hmm. he did, but I, I never saw him do anything. <laughs> so it, it's just it's just so hard when you see those kind of guys. What Are they really going to turn it on when they get to the NFL? Usually if they are that way in college, it's hard to see them all of a sudden become something in the NFL. Unless it's something where they're just getting such bad coaching that there, there was a reason that they failed. Ajim, there's some of that. I do think he got pretty bad coaching. I think he also, because he didn't have one position that he played, I think he was hurt by that, where they just moved him all over the place and asked him to do multiple things that at times he was not really geared towards. I, I think that hurt him, but I still think he's probably still going to be more of a part-time player most of his career. And you know what? That's okay. That was a year the Broncos with extra third round draft capital that year, getting young cost controlled developmental depth guys. You can rotate there on the interior defensive line. Never a bad idea. That's, that's eating your veggies. You know, down, maybe it's not the yep. most enjoyable in the moment. 
It's not drafting a running back, you know, the splash. But down the line, you're going to be thankful for eating those veggies. So uh, yeah. speaking of which, I, guys, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I did see earlier our listeners really know you well. They said you want Mac Jones in the first and then for the Broncos to trade back up into the first for Najee Harris. So All right, they know done. you. That's it. Know you, man. <laughs> that's the end of the show. That's that's now we're now we're just talking preposterous stuff. No, I'm <laughs> You're pissing me off. Oh, I shouldn't say that word. Um, uh, excuse me, guys. I'm not supposed to cuss on here. <laughs> oh, John said it's okay. Okay, yeah, that's added to the good. repertoire. We can say that from now on. Um, okay, <laughs> guys, we're probably gonna get out of here. Carl, you got any plans the rest of the night? Anything fun going on? And you know, work on any articles or stuff with the family? Um, well, I'm like I said, I'm I'm. Got 28 days until my race. So I'm in uh, intense training right now. Mm-hmm. I, I usually, I had my gallon jug of water b- beside me earlier. And uh, thankfully, I, I kind of had to take a little break because I knew I'd be doing this show and I didn't want to have to like walk, run out of here in the middle uh, of it. Carl, if you were committed to the cause, you would wear a, an adult diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Carl's adult diaper. I care too much about your hydration not to at least suggest the adult diaper for the pod. And thank you. Okay. Mike. <laughs> um, next, but, next uh, week, man. Next week, we need to get some uh, in the merch store, some uh, building the Broncos adult diaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get out of here. It's starting to get a little slap happy. Um, That's going to do it for building the Broncos this week. Really do appreciate it. Every single Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. Mountain time, we will be here, Carl and I, bringing you our Denver Bronco takes draft Bronco centric, et cetera, et cetera, the world at large uh, adult diapers. You know, it's, it's all here. Anything anybody could want in this show. Um, you can find Carl on Twitter at Carl Dumbler, MHH. Uh, you can find John uh, who just left the screen. So he's not sharing it there anymore, but uh, you can find John on Twitter at John K M H H also find myself on Twitter at Kendall M H H um, guys head over to milehighhuddle.com for all of our, written content and the community content as well. And I've been pu- publishing a lot. I know Eric has a bunch coming down the tracks. I mean, you set it to lead off the show March and April for us, almost as fun as the regular season and maybe even more fun than the regular season, given the Cardinals uh, issues over or the Cardinals. See, wow. I'm th- thinking baseball here, the Broncos issues over the last few seasons. So, uh, you know, we really love this time of year. It's a lot of fun. I mean, heck it's called building the Broncos for a reason. Uh, guys head on over to iTunes, leave us a five star reading and a comment. Like, subscribe, and share if you're joining us on YouTube. And for our Facebook listeners, click those thumbs up or laugh, react, heart, react, you know, whatever you want to do. It's a really big help doing any of those things uh, can help support us and conti- help us continue to bring you our Denver Bronco deep dives. You can follow us on Twitter at Mile High Huddle and at DTB Football Pod. Carl, I think I am going to uh, go cook dinner. Oh, man, guys, uh, Slim Slow is uh, correct here. Hit the like on the way out. Um, click those thumbs up. Uh, ending the show with a bang. Uh, we do appreciate all you guys. Uh, everybody stay safe. Um, and Carl, Carl singing an outro. Oh, okay. I, it, I'm going to list five players. If the Broncos take one of them at pick nine, I will, I will write an outro for our show. I got, I think the violins in the closet right behind me. Okay. Well, obviously I got the oop, wrong side guitar. Inverse. I got a, if I turn my camera, you'd see my keyboard. I got my, my musical room all right here. Got, got to jam sometime. It's all we can do That's these right. days, the virtual stuff. But uh, guys, <laughs> going to let you go. We really do appreciate it. Stay safe. Uh, be positive. Test negative. Go Broncos. You've been listening to Building the Broncos. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going. <laughs>